Let me take this opportunity to tell you about the Anant Fellowship uh, in some detail. Uh, as you've seen across our websites and our materials, uh, the Anant Fellowship uh, aims to create solutionaries for the built environment. And people often ask us, what does solutionaries mean? And uh, we've come up with this idea of a solutionary from the combination of somebody who is a revolutionary but also is solution oriented. Uh, so we feel that the, in the, the, the country, the world today needs people who have the zeal and the passion of revolutionaries who want to make a change, who recognize a problem and want to do something about it. But that should not just be about making uh, a noise and raising a voice, but it should also be finding positive solution oriented approaches to solving some of the problems that we have in being constructive, in being sustainable. Uh, and that's where the concept of combining revolutionaries and solutions uh, came up with this idea of solutionaries. And so the Anant Fellowship is really about finding and grooming and empowering solutionaries for the well for the built environment in India and the world. Which brings me to the mission statement of the Anant Fellowship, uh, which simply says that uh, we are here to prepare and empower solutionaries who design, build, and preserve, mind you, so design, build, and preserve a more equitable and sustainable built environment in India. Uh, and that's really our mission, uh, very simply put. If you look at the fellowship, uh, uh, in, 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 in a nutshell, uh, then it's really aimed at the built environment. So we are saying that uh, if you are wanting to do this fellowship, you should be interested in the general built environment in India, which everything human beings build from roads, bridges, buildings to airports, cities, and so on. Uh, it's a one year full time postgraduate academic program because it's housed in Anant National University and it's got a very strong classroom element. You'll get full credits and grades and, uh, and so on. Uh, it's very intense. It's just one year uh, with eight semesters of six weeks each. So it's going to feel very intense and, and, and very engaging at the same time. And it's multidisciplinary, uh, unlike everything that you would have been uh, doing in your undergraduate years and in your postgraduate years. Uh, this brings together multiple fields uh, to bear on solving a problem. And despite your specialization in, say, architecture or planning or engineering or other fields, uh, this will open up your minds to taking a multidisciplinary approach to solving problems. Uh, and today, ostensibly, what the program does is combines the disciplines of architecture, design, planning, sustainability, and the humanities and social sciences. Uh, but it also looks at disciplines that are at the, at the, at the edges of these disciplines uh, in terms of the multidisciplinarity element. Uh, there's a strong balance uh, between theory and practice. So while you do a lot of traditional classroom style lectures and learning, you will also be working a lot on projects uh, and, and working in groups on real life problems and uh, based on uh, the premise that experiential learning or learning by doing is as much part of learning today uh, as, as theory is. Uh, and similarly, while there will be a lot of instruction that will be going on in the classroom and you will be hearing from experts and academics, you will have a chance to experiment a lot as well. And, and so there will be instructional work as well as experimentation that will be going on. Uh, you will have a certain paced learning, so we will have a very regimented program for a year that you will be part of and it will be uh, fairly well defined and you'll know exactly what you're doing, which week, which day. At the same time, there's enough time for uh, open-ended uh, reflection and discovery of, uh, uh, of yourselves and other aspects of what you want to do uh, of your subject. Uh, that is very much built into and, and part of the program. Of course, we are partnered with the famous Gandhi Fellowship uh, and, and some of the areas of that partnership will become clearer as we go along in this presentation. Uh, here's what we are expecting you to become at the end of the fellowship. 
uh, and and this is very much uh, what are the outcomes that you should expect and what we are trying to expect uh, from our fellows number one we expect you to be great problem solvers uh, we expect that uh, you will be able to think critically from multiple perspectives uh, and also look at uh, look at the larger picture uh, when solving a problem uh, the belief is that today's problems have become very complex and very ambiguous and it's not possible to solve them by just having one expertise or one field of discipline that you need people from multiple backgrounds you need to personally have multiple perspectives uh, that you need to uh, collaborate with others uh, that you need to learn how to uh, uh, synthesize multiple perspectives look at the bigger picture and the detailed uh, analysis to come up with the answers and that's the whole problem solving approach that we want every one of our Ananth fellows to espouse once they are finished with this program uh, we want you to be creative uh, and and you know creative thinking has become almost cliched but the truth is that you can't be a great problem solver uh, unless you are generating sort of innovative, path-breaking solutions, of course, which are also implementable. Uh, and in that sense, uh, you, are, uh, you are going to be, become somebody who's not just creative for the sake of creativity, but are also thoughtful about how do you channel that creativity into implementable solutions. Uh, we are looking for people who are empathetic and, and empathy is uh, uh, in this case the empathetic, the empathetic leader that we are grooming you to be is not just about being empathetic to others but also being empathetic towards yourself uh, in making sure that you understand what are your own strengths and weaknesses and how might you have the best impact on others and on society and what might be your purpose in, in, in what you go about doing. And of course, how do you use your empathy to connect to others, to society, uh, and to generally be empathetic to the needs of all types of people and the diversity of our country in designing solutions that are uh, equitable and sustainable. Uh, finally, one of the things that we find uh, in all professions is that uh, People tend to uh, not work well with each other uh, and I think that uh, gets in the way of everything creative and exciting that we want to do because it all boils down to how well you work with others. And so one of the things that we are very conscious of is to make sure that all our fellows turn out to be team players who, who know how to bring together ideas but also who are able to integrate the perspectives of diverse people. Uh, if there are differences of opinion, how do you deal with that? And how do you come up with a solution that everybody is aligned and, and motivated to, to, to work behind? So these are sort of the four uh, outcomes or four attributes that we would like to see in our fellows uh, after they graduate from our one-year program. Uh, moving on, uh, I think I've already spoken about some of this, uh, but our uh, program is really a program that is expected to both expand your horizons, but also improve your ability to have impact. And if you really look at the program uh, and you look at the wheel on the left, it's uh, designed around four parallel tracks that will run throughout the entire year. So one track uh, on the top right is sort of your engagement with your domain itself. Uh, and there uh, we will be looking at concepts from architecture, design, planning and sustainability uh, that will be brought to bear by some of the best teachers uh, in the classroom itself. Uh, the second bucket or second track is really around uh, bringing outside perspectives and, and, and bringing perspectives from other fields and making sure that you are not just getting a, a narrow uh, specialist view of the world, but uh, perspectives from many other fields uh, which are adjacent to what you are doing such as humanities and social sciences but also allow you to build a bigger picture. The third track is around leadership uh, and around making sure that uh, we focus on your personal growth and your personal journey. 
Uh, and the fourth track is really around the experiential learning aspect, which I spoke about. Again, the importance of praxis, the importance of working on live projects. So if you really look at these four aspects or the four tracks, uh, they converge into sort of the live action project that we'll run throughout the year. Uh, and, and that's kind of at the center of this wheel that defines your one year. For the most distinctive aspect of this program is the fact that the faculty that we've lined up to teach you uh, are absolutely some of the best uh, people in the world. Uh, on this page you see uh, Rahul Merotra, uh, who's a practicing architect, but he's also a professor of urban design and planning at the Harvard Graduate School of Design. Uh, you see Samip Badora, who's a practicing principal of a firm called SP Plus A, uh, based in Mumbai, who's done amazing work in architecture and planning, is also a graduate of the Graduate School of Design at Harvard. Uh, you see uh, Rudy El Khauri, uh, who's the dean of the School of Architecture at uh, the University of Miami, and uh, uh, Rudy is going to come and spend a whole week at uh, uh, Anant and the Anant Fellowship. Uh, you see Amareshwar Gala, uh, who has been uh, doing amazing work around uh, historical preservation and preservation of architecture around the world. Uh, he's a, 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 a professor in Australia uh, who's been working on the uh, various national, uh, uh, various global uh, preservation uh, projects. Uh, and is going to be uh, teaching as well. Uh, several others, uh, Stephen Lemon from the Technical University Duke course, as you get a chance to go through them, but as you can see, uh, we have uh, people with very diverse backgrounds, a professor from the University of Portsmouth, uh, a Magsaysay Award winner, a former bureaucrat who worked at the World Bank, uh, and a, is a transportation specialist, uh, another architect uh, who's a practicing architect and has done urban planning from the University of Michigan. Uh, Michelle Danino uh, recently won the Padm Shri Award, uh, teaches at IIT Gandhi Nagar and uh, is, is, is an authority on historical preservation. Indra Parikh, who set up Flame Universities, formerly from IIM Ahmedabad, is going to be teaching on the program. Uh, uh, a former professor of communication at IIM Ahmedabad is going to be part of our communications faculty, which I emphasized is going to be such a big part of our curriculum. Aparna Piramal Raje is from Oxford University and Harvard University. Uh, she, in fact, has a business degree from Harvard, uh, but has become an authority on the field of design and writes frequently about it. And she's going to be teaching on this program as well. Uh, Moving on, uh, Amit Gulati is a, is a well-known designer, uh, practices in Delhi. Uh, Vikram Lal has written the definitive book on Buddhist architecture around the world, is also an architect himself. Uh, uh, did, a, did a master's in interdisciplinary design for the built environment in, at the University of Cambridge. So as you can see, uh, this is a, this is, uh, the fellowship is not a program that is completely unique. Others have thought about something like this before but none other than the Cambridge University. Uh, Seema Anand, who is going to do something on biomimicry, which has become a very big rage in design everywhere. James Matthews, uh, who again uh, is, is founder of uh, multiple companies and labs uh, and uh, lives in Kerala uh, and has been very involved in design thinking uh, and education. You know, at the end of the day, we expect that the Anand Fellowship is just the first year of a lifelong uh, career that you're going to build around uh, making a difference to the build environment. But coming out of the one year, we expect that uh, there will be new employment opportunities uh, across firms and companies and multilateral organizations, government, NGOs, and so on. Uh, several of you may want to start your own practices and uh, entrepreneurship is very big in this field, whether it is for profit, whether it's a social enterprise. Uh, we are going to encourage a startup uh, incubation during the course of the fellowship. And then some of you may want to go into uh, academic programs, do a PhD, masters, do some research uh, and, and, and work in policy. So I think we see multiple pathways uh, from the fellowship uh, to very exciting opportunities for you after the fellowship. 
Uh, the application process and deadlines are all on the website, but uh, like I said, it's open to everyone. Uh, it could be uh, people who've just finished their undergraduation or people who have been working for a few years. We are looking for individuals who are committed and passionate. Uh, you complete an online application, write up a statement of purpose, send us some work samples. Uh, if we shortlist you based on that, we do a telephonic interview, then we do an in-person interview, uh, and then uh, we make you an offer. The fellowship starts in September, so we have a really a rolling admissions process. Uh, we are very excited about the program. I hope you are. Uh, uh, this program is really about remaking yourself. Uh, we think that uh, you and, and people like you, if you're interested in this program, are really capable of making a huge difference to the world, uh, uh, in effect remaking the world. And it starts by first remaking yourself. So this is a one-year investment in you. Uh, this is a one-year investment in uh, taking you to a new uh, set of uh, capabilities and, 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 and awareness that will uh, in fact, create possibilities that you were so far unaware of. The fellowship is part of Anant National University. Uh, we are building a new university which we hope will be counted amongst the top universities in India. Uh, its focus is on design and the built environment and sustainability. Uh, we believe that one day this will be an uh, institution that will have global standing. Uh, but with very, uh, very distinct Indian identity and Indian roots. Uh, and really will be one of the best uh, institutions uh, of India, uh, but also one of the best institutions for India uh, and, and for our country, which really needs uh, to get its act together around its built environment. So I hope you will apply. Uh, and and uh, we are backed by uh, a very strong set of individuals who are doing this out of uh, a complete sense of purpose in making a difference to the educational environment in India. Ajay Piramal is the president of Anand. He's a very successful entrepreneur. Uh, I'm part of the governing body. Adil Zanilbhai, who was formerly the head of McKinsey and Company in India and is the chairman of uh, both the Network 18 Media Group as well as the Quality Council of India. Mr. A.M. Nayak, uh, who is synonymous with LNT. Abhishek Loda, who comes from the Loda Group. Indra Parekh, who also I mentioned earlier as a faculty member, Dr. Sudhir Jain, who leads IIT Gandhi Nagar, uh, Mr. S. S. Rathor, who uh, leads the Sardar Sarvo Sarovar Narmada Nigam, uh, are all some of the people who are behind this. Uh, and of course, uh, we have to end with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi because we are building this in his lands uh, and in, in, the, in the vicinity of, of where he lived. Uh, so we hope that uh, we can light your inner flame and if with that, you can go out and illuminate the world. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I hope that uh, you will be motivated and excited enough to come.